Hello guys, as a lot of us has already joined today, so let's go ahead and start the webinar. As at first, let me welcome you guys. Welcome to the webinar. Today's webinar's title is The Secure, Site, Secure Secrets, a cloud native approach made simple with QVault. And the speaker of the webinar is Saki Walamin. As many of, his, many of you already know him, he is one of our leading software engineer working in this QVault project, and he has been working with us for quite a long time now. So I'll be leaving that as to him. Saki, we can start. Yeah, thanks, Rakib. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. So this is our very first webinar in this new year. So greetings to you all. So as Rakib has already mentioned, this webinar is Secret Secrets, a cloud native approach made simple with Vault. I'm Saki Balamin, software engineer at AppScode and one of the developer behind the Vault project. So let's jump in. So here is our table of contents, as you can see. So at first, uh, I will deploy our TLS code ball server. Then I will enable secret engine. Then I will create some roles in our database. So I will basically create two roles here. So one is the super user role and another one is the read only user role. And I will uh, show the uses of these roles uh, in a moment. And then we'll manage user privileges. Uh, we'll grant privileges to some user and we'll see how we can revoke those privileges as well. And last but not the least, uh, we'll have uh, the Kubevault CLI in action throughout our uh, webinar today. Uh, we recently had a real, uh, major release and we did a lot of work on the Kubevault CLI. So we'll see how we can get the decrypted vault root token. Uh, you can generate the secret protocol class instead of writing some TDS YAML. We'll see how we can approve, deny, or revoke secret uh, user access. And lastly, we'll have a recap. And of course, we'll have a Q&A session at the end. And uh, during this webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them or text them in the Zoom chat, okay? So first thing first, uh, here is some resource link for your convenience. Uh, you can get KubeVault or KubeDB license, and you can also get the installation processes from the link given here. And here are some installation commands here. Uh, I have already installed the KubeVault Enterprise Operator and KubeDB Enterprise Operator. I've also installed the sequestro CSA driver and the Vault specific CSA provider that uh, I'm going to demonstrate in this demo. So uh, at first, let's uh, deploy our TLS secure Vault server. Uh, before doing that, let's see what is actually our Vault server. So a uh, Vault server is basically a Kubernetes CRD, which is used to deploy a Hashicorp Vault instance on a Kubernetes cluster in a Kubernetes native declarative way. And when a Vault server is created, the Kube Vault operator will deploy a Vault and create the necessary Kubernetes resources required for this particular Vault server. Before deploying the Vault server, let's take a look at the YAML file. So here we, you can see the YAML file of a Vault server. As usual, I provided the kind here for the Vault server in the metadata section. I provided the name and the namespace. In the specs section, you can see the TLS configuration here. I'm using Start Manager for managing the TLS. We'll need to create a issuer named Vault issuer for it. In the alert secret engine field, you can uh, you already know that Kube Vault uses the command is double optimum. So you can allow or disallow some sort of secret engine or even the namespaces. I'm currently allowing all namespaces and only the MySQL secret engine. So any other secret engine that wants to be attached to the Vault server will be denied. I'm using the latest version of Vault, which is 1.9.2. I'll deploy three replicas. Termination policy is set to do not terminate. And as the backend, I'm using Raft. As the ancillary method, I'm using Google KMS GCS. To configure that, I'll need to create a secret to connect to the GCS bucket. So which is, uh, I have already created the GCS grid, and it will create, when the vault will start to uh, get up and running, it will create five secret that will be stored in the GCS bucket, and it will require at least three of them to unseal it automatically. For monitoring purpose, I'm using Prometheus. So here is the vault issuer file here. Uh, so vault issuer, I have provided the name and the namespace. And for the, this vault issuer, I'll need to create a secret of vaults here that I have already created. So let's go ahead and deploy our TLS secret vault server. So let me show you uh, the installed, installed operators I have already. 
So in the kubedb namespace, I have the kubedb operator installed. In the kubevault namespace, I have the kubevault operator installed. And in the kube system namespace, I have the secret store sensor driver and the vault specific sensor provider. I have already created a couple of sectors. Let me show you. So I have created the vault CM that's required for the vault issuer and the GCP thread for the unsealing part. So let's start by applying creating the vault issuer. So let's apply the vault issuer YAML. So vault issuer should be created. Let's see. Yes, vault issuer has been created. So now let's deploy our vault server. So our vault server is coming up. We can trace the vault server status from the different status status condition and currently this phase is initializing. As it started to come up, I can check my GCS bucket to see if the secrets and the root token has been successfully stored here. Yes, we can see our secrets and the vault root token is getting stored in the GCS bucket. So we can see currently we have one ready replica, but the desired number of replica is three. So vault is currently unsealed and is critical state. So critical state means if the vault is accepting connection, you can still connect to it, but the desired number of replicas is not sufficient. So we want three replicas, but right now we have only one replica ready. So let's wait for the rest of the replicas to get ready. So currently have two ready replicas. The last one is coming up. Just wait for it to get ready. So we have all the desired replicas ready. And when a vault server is ready, it will create a vault policy and a vault policy binding for the authentication method. So now, uh, if I want to check the vault status or any other section using the vault CLI, uh, what I need to do is export some environment variables. So let's do them first. So let's export the vault address. For the demo purpose, let's keep the TLS verification. And lastly, uh, we need to export the vault root token as well. So now uh, what we have here, so we have uh, used the ancillary method as GCS games. As you already know that you can also use the AWS or Azure or even a Kubernetes secret to automatically unseal and store these keys. So the problem is here. Uh, now, if you want to uh, use the vault root token, you will need to download them separately, right? And you will need to use the corresponding CLI, for example, for GCS CLI or Azure or AWS CLI to decrypt them as they are already in an encrypted mode. So you will need separate CLI for those. But for your user convenience, uh, we have integrated this thing here. So you can easily uh, decrypt your vault root token without downloading it uh, anyway. So let's see that using the vault CLI. So using this command, we can do it very simply. So we can see the vault root token is here. We have, it has, uh, get the vault root token and it has also decrypted it. And you can see this part here, this is the Kipsitem uh, namespace UID. You can also use your own cluster name during the Helm installation process. Otherwise it will be replaced by Kipsitem uh, namespace UID. So it's uh, really handy for multi-cluster users of vault. So now, uh, so here's a comment uh, I have uh, still in the slide. So you can use this comment to decrypt the vault root token. Yeah, you will get the name and also the value here. And if you want to get only the value, you can additionally pass the value only flag. So that way you will get the value. Of the... So I, 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 uh, let's uh, see that as well. So, so in this way, I will get only the value of the vault root token. So let's export that as well. So I have exported all the necessary variables. Let's export for from the vault service. 
to check its status. So our vault is active. Let's see if we have any secret engine enabled for our auto engine already enabled. So these are the default secret engine that are already enabled in our vault server. So our vault server is up and running. So let's move forward with this demo. So uh, up next, uh, we want to enable a secret engine. So what is a secret engine? The question comes first, right? So a uh, secret engine is basically a Kubernetes CRD, uh, which is designed to automate the process of enabling and configuring different aspects of a secret engine, you know, vault in a Kubernetes native way. So I'm going to use uh, MySQL database for enabling the MySQL secret engine. I have already created a MySQL database instance here. Let me show you that. So I have the MySQL pod SQL zero is run here. So I can create, uh, go ahead and create the secret engine. Uh, let me show you the YAML first. So you can see the kind and I've provided the name and the namespace. I'm going to use the dev namespace here. And it's very simple in the spec section. All you need to provide is the vault reference and the database reference. So in the database reference section, I'm providing the name and the namespace of the MySQL DB and also the plugin name of the MySQL I'm using here. So let's go ahead and create the MySQL secret engine. <clears throat> so we can see our MySQL secret engine is successfully ready. If I check the secret engine, So we can see the MySQL success engine is success and we can see also the path here, which is embedded here. So it's not user configurable, it will be automatically generated by that default. So now if I check the vault secret list, I should see it, yes. So the secret engine database type is successfully enabled. Okay. So now we have the secret engine. So now we can do a lot of stuff using it. So let's go ahead. Now, our secret engine is pretty much useless without any roles or anything in it. So we are going to use some, we're going to create some database roles. So as I have enabled the MySQL secret engine, of course, I'll uh, create some MySQL role. So uh, MySQL role is basically, uh, so I'm going to create uh, two roles here, uh, specifically super user role and another one is read only role. So uh, both kind are MySQL role. So our MySQL role is basically a Kubernetes CRD, which is uh, which allows a user to create database secret engine role uh, in a, a Kubernetes native way. And when a MySQL role is created, the key vault operator creates a role according to the form specification. So let me briefly describe some of the specification here. So in the super user role, I am uh, definitely providing the secret engine reference where I want to create this role. And in the creation statement and revision statement, uh, that we, uh, I have provided some my SQL statement here that will be, uh, the creation statement will be used to create a role in the DB and revision statement will be used to revoke the DB. I've also set the default detail and the max detail here. And similarly, uh, I have created, uh, will create a read-only role here. So uh, the only difference in the creation and revision statement, uh, here I'm giving the all permission and here I'm simply giving a select only permission here. So now uh, let's go ahead and create those roles. So our supervisor role is created. Let's create the read only role. So our read only role is also created. Nice. Okay. So what's next? So now uh, what we want to do, we want to manage our user privileges, right? We have our secret engine enabled and we have some roles that uh, DB ad, uh, a vault admin or DB admin can create. And now he can do, or uh, I can do assign assignment or you can do on request, ex give access to some DB users. So we want to manage user privileges in some way. So one way is to do it is by a uh, secret access request, which is uh, more of a human friendly way. So a secret access request is basically a Kubernetes CRD, which allows a user, a DB user, to request a vault server credentials in a Kubernetes native way. 
So when our user will record uh, some uh, to access some DB, he will need some credential. So he can make a secret access request. And a secret access request can be created under various role rates. Uh, in our case, we are using the MySQL role, of course. And we have provided the name here. And the subjects, which will have the necessary permission to read the secrets that will be generated on approval of the secret access request. So uh, secret access request basically have uh, three different phases. Uh, uh, in generally, it waits for approval. Uh, once it approved, uh, it gets the, to the phase of approved and it also can be denied. If the DB admin see any anomaly in the say, spec section or anywhere, he can simply deny the secret access request. And on approval, the key vault operator will issue credentials and create Kubernetes secret uh, containing those credentials. So let's go ahead and make a secret access request. So we can see our secret access request here, which is in, which is currently waiting for approval. So now what the admin can do, admin can see if the secret access request, I want to give permission to this particular user. I can simply approve it using the Kimfold CLI. So in Kimfold, we have the command here. So you can use the Kimfold approve or Kimfold deny to approve or deny a particular secret access request. So let's, let's approve it. Uh, for that end purpose. So I have approved the secret access request. It's approved. So on approval, as I already said, it will create some secret. So it has just created seven seconds ago the MySQL kit that has the credential. So let's check it out. So as you can see, it contains a username and a password that gives this user access to the MySQL DB. So now uh, what we're going to do, we're going to use this set of credentials and log into the MySQL DB and do some stuff there. <clears throat> so let's uh, encrypt them first. So I'm going to basically put the code those credentials as I will need them for the log process, uh, login process. So let's log into our MySQL DB. Let's use those credentials. So I'm going to use the username and also the password. So we are logged into the MySQL DB. Let's run some SQL queries. Let's see, we have the databases. We we'll have this databases here. Let's create a database. Okay. So create database test. So we have created a test DB. Let's use it. Let's see if there are any tables that should don't. We just created it. There is no table. Let's create a table here. <clears throat> so we are going to create a table called product with ID of integer type and its name. Uh, which is we're going to use departure. Let's give it size 100. And let's say price uh, in float. Okay. Uh, sorry. <clears throat> oh, sorry. It should be int, not id. Okay. So we have our table. So let's insert some data in the table. Let's put some values in it. So let's say it's, uh, so we have 10 here, uh, maybe for $3.5. So we see it there. Let's insert another value, maybe. Uh, we can insert our a book. That's the price of seven point five. So now, what we can do? We can just check it, verify it if they are there. Yeah, we can see the inserted value in there. Let's keep the data as it is right now. We'll see uh, how we're going to verify it in a while. So let's exit from the DB right now. 
So in this way, uh, an user can be granted some permission here. So in for this particular user, we have given it a super user role. So he can read, write, or drop any databases. Okay. So now uh, the big, uh, one interesting question comes is, uh, how do we uh, secure uh, microservices with dynamic credentials or one of the use cases of Vault, uh, which is very popular here. So in our case, what we want to achieve, say we have a very simple microservice uh, that wants to read or write some data from the DB and it needs to get some credentials for that. So uh, one of the very cool concept behind Vault is dynamic secrets, is dynamic secrets. And when we actually talk about secret scroll, uh, the ability to have the same username and password distributed across your uh, interfleet allows a particular attacker or malicious user to attack one insecure area and then gain ex uh, access across your entire environment, right? But dynamic secrets, what it does is it changed the paradigm a little bit by having each of your endpoint uh, get its own username and password for the entity that you are trying to get access to. And dynamic user uh, credentials are created only when they are used, they are not predefined. And most of the dynamic secrets are time bound and they are easily revocable. So if you notice that there are some sort of leak or there are some issue or breach inside your uh, environment, you can simply revoke the secrets and all the rest of your applications will have the user, same user uh, or the same other username and passwords. So your last radius gets reduced uh, by a lot. So that's what we want to do. We want to, our microservice will uh, request for credentials to the cube vault dynamic credentials and our operator will provide some username and password. Then our service can use those set of username and password to read or write from the TV according to its role. So how do you give permission to this service here, microservice here? So we can do that in a more like a machine way. So for Kubernetes, we have the robot account or the service account for that. So where we can do that using the secret role binding here, okay. So what secret role binding does? <clears throat> okay, so secret role binding basically takes a set of role and it binds these roles to a set of users. So this role that we are later created, the read-only role, uh, if we create this role and create the service account and apply the secret role binding, it will create a vault policy and the vault policy binding, and it will bind this policy to this particular service account. So this role will be bounded to this account, okay? And on the other hand, we want to inject those secrets into our microservice. How do we do that? Well, did you know we can use Vault Secret Store CSA driver to do that. And there is a concept called Secret Provider class. So you can uh, use uh, this Secret Provider class YAML uh, to mount the credentials into the microservice, uh, your deployment or your, uh, any pod. So uh, we can tediously write this YAML over and over again, or we can simply generate using it the Kube Vault CLI. So yes, we have automated the process of generating the secret provider class using the Kube Vault CLI. So you can see the command here. Uh, you simply need to use the Kube Vault generate secret provider class, the name and the namespace. You can uh, refer the name uh, secret role binding and the role that you want to provide and the keys that you want to mount and also uh, as the object name uh, the allies if you want to provide so for example uh, in here we want to uh, bind the vault role uh, to a secret role binding uh, we will mount the username as the sql user and we can mount the password as the sql pass okay so uh, let's see how that can be done so let's uh, create a service account first okay? So we have our service account. Now let's create a secret role binding. So we have our secret role binding that is successful. So in success, uh, in a success secret role binding, it will create a vault policy and a vault policy binding, as you can see. Now with this secret role binding, I can simply create the vault uh, 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 secret provider class here. Okay. So if I use the vault uh, generate command here, I can see the uh, in the description here. So I can simply copy 
this part here from the common helper. So let's edit it. So let's say we have to SQL pass, SQL user. We want to bind the read only role. And for the MySQL role, uh, SQL role then let's skip the name it is. As we're going to use it uh, in a different channel, so I'm providing some fixed role here. So that's applied. Yeah. So we can see that our secret provider class has been successfully generated. So we can dump it in a YAML or apply it directly from here. Let's dump it in a YAML. So yes, we can we have the secret provider class here. So we can go ahead and create the secret provider class. So our secret provider class has been created. So now uh, let's say we want to deploy our small little microservice here. <clears throat> okay. So uh, we have a deployment here. So it is named a demo microservice. Uh, it will use two replicas and it will uh, use the test user account, the service account we have just created to authenticate to the vault. It will use our uh, image here. I'll describe this uh, demo app here in a moment. So it will use uh, this path to read the credentials and the path is the similar where we want to mount the, our, our, our values here. So for the secret provider class, we provided the name that we have created, which is fault TV provider. So now uh, we can actually go ahead and create our little microservice. Let's check it. So we define two replicas, both of them is up and running. Let's log them out, what we can see in there. So uh, as you can see, uh, this particular pod is using this username and this password, and it's reading that data from the database we have created earlier, remember? So we have a pen and a book, and it's failing to delete a particular item from product. Why? Because we have bound it, which role? The read-only role here. So it can read the DB items from the database we created, but it's failing to delete the item from them. So in this way, it's very simple and very handy to manage the user privileges. And if we log from the second pod, what we can see, we can see a different set of credentials as we're using voltage generating, voltage generating the dynamic credentials, we can see the same deployment, but a different pod is using the different set of username and password. And we're getting the same, the items, but it's also failing to delete the items from the database as it have only the read-only access. Okay. All right. So now, uh, how about uh, we, we saw that we gave our user a permission of super user pool. Now I think that was a mistake. So how do I revoke it? So it's pretty simple to revoke a particular secret access request, just like Vault Approve and Vault Deny, we can simply apply keep still Vault Revoke. And let's see how that works, okay? So we want to revoke that access that we approved earlier. Let's revoke that. So this is expired, right? So let's check it. So we can see the phase is expert while this was revoked by the default CLI. Now, what did I do? I copied the username and the password, right? Now, what if I want to log in using this username and credential again? So let's try to get it. Let's try to log into the table. So I have the username that I copied. So let's use that and gain control over the DB. Let's see. No, we cannot do it. Access is denied for this particular role. So this user has been revoked from the TV. So in this very simple way, we can revoke any malicious user if we want. 
so uh, here's uh, the recap of the demo, what did we do so far? So what, uh, what we uh, did here, so we created a TLS secret vault server. Uh, we then we enabled a MySQL secret engine. We created a couple of roles. One is supervisor role, another one was read-only role. Then we created secret access request. We approved it and on approval we saw we got a set of credentials and those credentials were used to log into the DB and we inserted some data and created tables. After that, we tried to secure our little microservice using the secret role binding. We gave the service account only the read access and we saw that how you could read from the DB but it could not delete and it got the dynamic credentials all in its spot. And lastly, we revoked a secret access request using the key vault CLI. Okay. So uh, that was all from the demo perspective. So what's next? Uh, so uh, last year has been very exciting for the vault, but this year, year uh, will be even more exciting, I think. So now uh, the next, uh, we want to basically automate the like performing data operations like update, scaling, or reconfiguring different parts of vault and we want to uh, back up take backup of vault data uh, you know as you know we have a stash uh a product for backup i uh, want to integrate it with the vault and our front end team has been kept busy uh, in different ui so uh, uh, very soon i hope uh, we're going to see the vault ui in action so it will be even simpler to deploy and manage vault using the Kipfold operator so uh, that was all from this demo part uh, from my side. So now if you have any questions, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask them. And do you have any questions in the Zoom chat? Zoom chat. So I see no questions in the Zoom chat. So uh, if no one has any question, uh, I would like to say thanks for joining uh, in this time. So you can, of course, uh, communicate with us at hello at appscore.com and tweet us at kubefault. And of course, you can visit our website at kubefault.com for documentation and installation process. And another thing, and you can also connect with us at Git, uh, GitHub via github.com slash kubefault. So uh, Rakib, uh, you want to take over? Hello, so thanks for joining and your participation. We really appreciate you joining at our webinar. So we'll be, we'll be having other webinars in like two weeks. So there will be uh, introduction of that tomorrow. So stay tuned with us and thank you.